What's going on, guys? On my ex, episode 13 this week. Back in the booth with the boys, Faisal. Uh, Justin, how y'all doing today? Doing good, man. It's uh, been a long week. Just busy, busy, but uh, excited to be back on for another episode. Excited. We got the Pro Series finals coming up for Halo 5, so we're going to get into all that. But um, yeah, man, I know football season is huge right now. So you guys, that's probably the talk of the town with you guys. But uh, I've never been too big in football for whatever reason. But um, yeah, but other than that, just ready to get the show going. Yeah, this week was kind of a, it was a busy week. But at the same time, it was kind of a lull week, right? Because there was no NBA uh, going on. Not very yep. much Halo. It was kind of a bye week for Halo. Um, but NFL action in full force. West, your Ravens are... Literally don't hurting my soul, dude. Not, like, yeah, uh, I didn't you want watch to know that. how to kill the mood of the podcast. You bring. I'm just right well. There. I'm I'm pulling for him, man. Like I like Lamar. <laughs> I think he's dope, dude. You know, season's over, dude. We got too many injuries to the offensive line. We're a team that needs an offensive line to run the football. I'm that. I'm I'm past it. We're five and two, and and the season's over. So. I That's want to see Lamar, Lamar develop that arm, though. If, if Lamar could develop that arm, I think they could be so freaking good, man. But, yeah, rough to see that. Tom Brady, though, my guy, crushing it. Looking forward to watching him, actually, tonight because we're, re we're recording this episode 13 on Monday, actually. So we uh, we were all just kind of, <laughs> like, chalked last week. So uh, glad to bring on my ex right before it goes live. So this is pretty much our fresh mm -hmm. thoughts for those of you guys checking this out right now, Monday at yeah. 1 p.m. PST or 4 p.m. Eastern, depending on where you are. Uh, episode 13. I'm surprised we didn't skip it with it being Halloween, you know, two days ago mm. and, and all that stuff. I was I was kind of skeptical even yesterday. I was like the day after uh, after Halloween, we're doing episode 13. But glad to be here. We Like Faisal said, we got the first uh, Halo 5 championship coming up this weekend. So uh, what we figured we would do for this episode, jump in. We want to talk about all the teams uh, that we know confirmed are going in the top eight teams um, and check out their rosters, see what you guys can expect and give you guys kind of our predictions. So uh, Wes Faisal, are you guys ready to jump into it? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's, let's get do it going. Let's do it. So here are our top eight teams heading in to uh, next weekend or this weekend. Sorry, is championship on Saturday. Be sure you guys tune into the Halo broadcast for that. Uh, the top eight teams at the top of the list. We got Inconceivable, Cloud9, Sentinels, KC Pioneers, followed by Flyers, Falling, Kingdom and no ice. Uh, a lot of talent right off the uh, right off the bat. Looking at this list, I wanted to start at the bottom of the list and work our way up and kind of talk about uh, the rosters and what we can kind of expect from them. So let's start off with no ice. We saw some cool things for them throughout the broadcast. Uh, Faisal, we, me and you actually casted a tournament where they were going off, got top four. That team consists of Bards, Goldstar, BR, JK7, and UE Dragon. Uh, what do you kind of see out of this team? And do you, do you think they have the potential to maybe break in the top four or do better? So personally, like you said, Justin, we, we commentated a tournament where we saw this team absolutely go off. We saw them take Sentinels to a game four, and they actually almost won that game four. Um, and I believe that tournament, that was the only game Sentinels lost for the whole for the entirety of the day. So definitely showed their potential there. Um, but going into to this weekend's um, championship tournament, I can't see them breaking into the top four personally, just because looking at the top of the, you know, some of the top teams, we have Inconceivable, Cloud9, Sentinels. Uh, and then you have your other teams like your Flyers, your Falling Esports, Casey Pioneers. Um, you know, there's just a lot of talent spread across the eight teams that we're going to have that we have here uh, that we're discussing. And I, I can't see them breaking into that top four for this tournament. I feel like all the teams that were behind in skill a little bit, like your cloud nines um, are kind of gaining that traction and they're kind of coming at They're going to be coming full force this tournament. They know it's for the bigger prize pool, right? It's $10,000. So a lot more money on the line than the tournaments we've seen recently that were, you know, much smaller prize pool. So I feel like aside from the money, there's also a kind of more of a sense of pride in this one. Like we know as spectators, as, as lovers of the game, as, as fans of the, of the competitive halo scene, um, we know that cloud nine now has had plenty of time to prepare and to kind of get back into the into the swing of things with halo five so we've seen them win tournaments here and there with some different rosters but i want to see them uh specifically cloud nine um you know come out this weekend and do really well but as far as uh, no ice yeah we'll have to see maybe they'll bring the ice yeah more money more pressure right wes we've seen that team a little bit in the esports arena tournaments as well as some of the saturday events uh what do you think of this roster man um just thinking like at, based off what i've seen 
I think that they're definitely a top eight team. I think that they're well deserved to be here. I think these guys are solid up and coming players. Um, but I don't think that they will ever consistently be in the top four unless they're able to like individually step up um, and, and perform at a higher level, higher level consistently. Um, I I think they're all like like I said. I think this is about where I expect their road to end. The top eight. Um, potentially top six. I know they got top four at a tournament and they were playing really well that day, but that's the best I ever seen them play. And they ended up only getting top four. So it's like, I have to see more from them for me to be able to predict more. Um, they're definitely not the worst team in the top eight, but I think that like, they're not going to be good enough to con like for me to be able to predict them to be a team like Cloud9, like Faisal was saying, a mm -hmm. team like Inconceivables or a team like Sentinels. Like, mm -hmm. uh, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done with these guys in order to to break that threshold. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, we were super impressed, obviously, when No Ice got that top four placement. Um, but I don't know if you guys remember me like predicting that you know there would be some poaching potentially with players and different things depending on who was going off the, uh, that stuff. Actually, uh, not to go into detail or give names or anything, that's all private. But that was actually happening after that top four, uh, you know, finish. You know, different players on No Ice were getting different offers and and running and trying to, to figure stuff out. So I'm not sure if that's gonna like. But then they end up sticking with their roster because they had the pro. Where spot, are you getting so. this intel? I mean, sounds like a straight, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a straight sick feed live. <laughs> Stop it. No names. I mean, we're going to beep out. Know, we're going to beep out. The, right. We're going we're gonna to beep out the, uh, the the broadcast of the show. Oh boy. <laughs> but, oh, uh, boy. We got some insider information. Over here. <laughs> but then, so but they stayed with the same team, you know, because of the pro spot. So I'm wondering if maybe that'll come back to affect their chemistry. You know, they haven't gotten top four since. Um, but I don't want to go, I don't want to count them out. I do want to say, I mean, they have placed top four. Like you guys said, they are a top eight team. They belong where they're at. Um, I don't envy, uh, Casey pioneers. That's an amazing team. Those guys, Druck and soul snipe. Those guys are rad players and putting the work, but I know every team outside of the top four is gunning for that spot. You know, like they see that that as like the potential, uh, crack mm -hmm. in the door to get into that top four. So, uh, no ice on a hot day. Hey, they could probably take down Casey pioneers. I think they did before. So you never know. Uh, let's move on to the next team kingdom. This team is clip halo elite kilimanjaro and thin um they unfortunately finished with an O and three uh a quick 3-0 in the last pro series but they did secure a spot in the top eight do you guys or wes are you familiar with any of these guys yeah i've seen thin i've seen clip um these guys actually played yesterday in the esports arena tournament they're solid um they're probably if i had to call them out um which i'm about to i guess uh i think they're probably the worst <laughs> team in the top eight um, and that's no disrespect to them. I think that they're so new to the top eight that this is like their their highest uh, standings um, in rankings uh, in any of their careers. So this is a big moment for them to be able to like join the likes of of Inconceivable Sentinels, No Ice. We go through all these like Casey Pioneers, like guys that have been here for a little bit now. Um, like you see these guys moving in and this is their opportunity to prove like, do they belong in the top eight? Are they the worst team in the top eight? And, and everybody goes through that point in their careers where um, you imagine like you go from top 16 to top 12, to top eight to top six, and you eventually make it all the way. If, if that's what your destiny lies. Right. Um, so this is just another step on the ladder for them um, with this step. We'll see what they're able to do, but similar to the no ice effect. I think that right now in their careers, they're not going to have what it takes uh, to create the upsets that they, they probably want. It's up to them to try and prove us wrong, but I think that they still need a little bit more time. They still have to form as individual players and get a little bit better before we start to uh, see any like highlight reels come out of them and major upsets. Yeah, yeah, I think Wes pretty much touched on on everything that I would say about Kingdom as well. So I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, congratulations to those guys for being in this spot and being on this list. You know, some of these teams and players are you know, historic Halo players. So I'm definitely, I'm sure that these guys are happy to, to be in this position, but to be honest, I'll keep it short and sweet. I don't think they're going to crack, crack the top four of this tournament. Yeah, I think uh, there's something, there's something fun about being the underdog, you know, and like having that first position, that first time where you get the opportunity to, to play against the big dogs, right? And have no expectation. No one's expecting you to win. So yeah. I think it could be I a mean, really good, yeah. You could be really you good learning experience. You get to play experience. loose. You, exactly. get to play loose. You, you get to kind of, um, like, you get to kind of just play for free, and if you exactly. lose, it's kind of what we expect. I think the best thing about this is, one, that there's a lot of experience to be had for these guys, and two, like, when I look at, like, the top eight teams, and I'm like, how did they get here? They had to go through the Open Cup, and I look at a lot of the teams that didn't make it through the Open Cup. We're talking Aces team. We're talking, like, a lot of good players 
did not make it to the top eight for this tournament. So these guys should pride themselves on making Absolutely. it up until this point. Yeah, uh, and, that's very true. With that being said, we have to focus on just this tournament and this tournament alone, and that's the top eight teams. And you're in the top eight in the world now, but where's your spot in that top eight? I, I think uh, there's going to be a lot left on the table for these guys. But like I said, they're so young yeah. and new that there's opportunity in the future. I think it's a great foot in the door. Like you guys are all like, you're like, we're pretty much on the same page uh, with that. So I think the fact that, like you said, Wes, they made it through those open tournaments and, and found their, themselves to be in this top eight on this list with some of these uh, amazing players and teams that alone is a victory for them. Um, and I'm not to say, you know, Hey, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a tournament, you know, anyone could be on fire. So maybe if they get a good matchup and they you know, they win some of their early games, they could do something, but uh, realistically looking at the other teams, I, I don't expect them to make top four, um, but I am happy. And I'm sure they are as well, that they're in this position uh, going into the championships. Yeah, and uh, I think there's something like my hope is that in this experience they'll they won't be discouraged, but they'll take it as a learning experience, right? I think I was thinking of the Last Dance documentary. Uh, you know, we mention it all the time, Michael and stuff. Um, I loved the segment with Kobe. I mean, obviously, I love the segment with Kobe, but where Kobe said like, you know, that f- first All Star game where he got to play against Michael, where he got to like touch him and feel him and see like what he was about and how much he learned from that experience of playing against the greatest. Like, I'm hoping that these guys have a similar experience where getting to play against the greatest, they can take away. Man, did you see the way they did this or the way they did that? You know did what I mean? Did you just and compare Kingdom to Kobe Bryant? <laughs> <laughs> did you just say just, that? Kingdom just learning. Kobe? No, just the learning side of things. Like, you know, when when. When, when Kobe met, you know, who at the time was at the top of the mountain, he used it as an opportunity to, to better himself. And so I'm hoping I mean, that for Kingdom, it's the same thing, you know? That's the best case scenario for these guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I take it, but yeah. it could also be like we will playing against uh, Allen Iverson and getting stepped over uh, after three gets hit in your face. I was like, I was like, Lou was nasty. Yeah, yeah, I was like, Lou was nasty. Tyler, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could also be a lot like that. So yeah, uh, we'll no, but ultimately, see. yeah, they, it just depends. This is a big, like a kind of like a pivot moment. It could be for for these players in their careers, right? Halo Infinite is going to be here. Um, you know, it's going to be here next year and. Now in these tournaments, it's the time for these guys to really let their names be put out there and let themselves be known on an individual basis and on a team basis, right? So maybe one of the four players on this roster goes off and helps them win a game two Slayer, and like he was just dominating in the whole series, but they lose. So maybe someone, you know, some of the better players can keep an eye on him, right? So um, it's definitely an opportunity, and it's going to be interesting to see how they treat it. Cool. So let's let's keep it moving. We'll move on to the next team, Kingdom. Uh, shout out to you guys. Uh, wishing you nothing but the best. Uh, falling. I feel like we're kind of getting into some of the big dogs now. I think that the, yeah. the six five four area is going to be the most hotly contested uh, in this tournament. So falling esports is up next. That is Envor, uh, Nebi, Musa, and Septify. We've seen some hot things out of this team uh, recently. Faisal, what what do you see for this team? Do you see them having that potential to really crack through? Uh, these are some grinders here. Yeah, Falling Esports uh, is definitely, and like you said, between the four, five, and six rosters, I think any of them could be on fire and and have an upset series. And Falling Esports falls into that category for me. Um, You know, you got Septify, Musa, Nebi, and Envor. All players, Musa, we've seen, um, you know, compete for quite a while in the competitive, in like in some of the top, you know, Halo rosters or some of the more established rosters in the past um but then you have you know Envor and nebby septify has also kind of been around the block and some of these i know he's friends with a lot of the top pros and he plays a lot of pro eights with them so this roster just depends on you know how they're clicking on the day of the tournament and if they'll be able to really pull it together and, and string out an upset and uh as far as the sentinels cloud nine inconceivable i do not think they would be able to win in a series against them but i i do believe they have what it takes to knock out a team like flyers or a team like possibly a team like casey pioneers right so maybe it's on me to to give this team some more respect the casey pioneers and i definitely do respect them as a play as players and as a team because of what they've been able to do um but until they they until any of these teams in the four five and six area really consistently knock out these top three juggernauts you know that's where they're going to stay is in that four five six area so we'll see if any of these uh the you know teams such as kcp flyers and, and falling esports can make an upset like that happen yeah, I um I, I agree. It's good to see Musa playing again. I know he was doing other stuff for a while. 
Um, and then he jumped back in and kind of just picked up where he left off. The clips he's been posting have been nasty and just dominating. And I think that, uh, you know, with like-minded players that are hardworking, that are committed to the game, that love the game uh, like he does, you know, we've seen them have some some good success here. I know they had Boo Boo for one of the eSports Arena tournaments and got second. So uh, the potential is there for upsets. Uh, like I said, I think everyone's gunning for that that KC Pioneers uh, spot. Envor is, is the homie, like the passion he brings to his teams. Uh, he's an, he's an absolute difference maker in some of those big moments. And I know that he's, you know, ready to rise up to that. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm excited for this bracket to come out. I know we were talking about it before the broadcast started. We were like, man, if we had this bracket, it would be so lit. Wes, is there anything about this falling esports team that you think could give them the edge over a team like Flyers or KC Pioneers? I think, I think falling and Flyers are probably in the same tier. Um, of teams. I would not group KC Pioneers with them. I think KC Pioneers is a level above both those teams. Um, to go against kind of Faisal's point, I think I think KC Pioneers is good enough to to really compete with the Cloud Nines, the Sentinels, and the Inconceivables. I think that they're probably going to be an underdog in all three of those series that they play those teams in. But I cannot group them with Flyers and Falling. I think that a majority of the time we'll see that happen. Um, so not to go off on a tangent about that but uh for flyers or for falling um i kind of think they're stuck in their tier i don't think they're ever going to be uh, as of right now and their current status and like how they are as players i don't think that they're good enough to beat K kansas city pioneers and i think that they're definitely better than kingdom um so it's kind of like fifth and sixth is where i expect this team to land um if if they get a good bracket somehow and they play a team like flyers for top four, um, depending on like if flyers creates an upset and then loses or, or something weird happens mm -hmm. with the brackets, maybe there's an opportunity to get top four, but if they have to play one of the top four seeds to get top four, they're not getting top four. Um, they're going to get fifth or six, um, just about every day of the week. Um, Obviously, they can prove me wrong, and they can be on fire, and they can play well. But until I see something like that, I think that like these guys are really good. They're they belong in the top six, but I don't think that they belong in the top four. So they're kind of where they are and seated correctly for me. And and not to throw any shade at fifth or sixth. Fifth or sixth is good. No. I mean, when you're talking about how many I teams sign up for these, career basically seated <laughs> fifth or sixth. Yeah, so no shade there, but yeah, I, I, I could definitely see that, Wes, uh, so I appreciate that insight. Um, the next team on the list, obviously, is one that's uh, near and dear to my heart. You know, it's Flyers. We're looking at Commonly, Super CC, Straight Sick, and the addition of Trippy from Envy, uh, the upgraded Flyers roster, in my opinion. Um we saw some 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 moves out of them. They started off pretty flat, you know, as they were kind of readjusting back to Halo Five. I think Straight Sick uh, start had a slow start in the first couple of cups, and they were not sure about different force. But now they have Trippy uh, moving in. Um, Faisal, do you think Trippy is going to be a difference maker for this team and push them over kind of their hump? So I really like this roster. Um, you know, obviously a lot of these players have been around the block. Uh, minus Super CC, he's kind of the new face. Uh, you got commonly trippy and straight sick all i mean very very talented players historically speaking right and even in terms of halo 5 obviously trippy um you know he's on that envy roster going into halo infinite and he's been on some amazing rosters in halo 5's peak as well so he's definitely one of the top players so automatically i think they have a, like a leg up right uh, and then you have commonly a uh, halo 5 gold medalist right you know he you know this kid can can really catch fire and be a if he's a, commonly is a playmaker like he will win you games because of how smart and, and how good he plays when he's in his zone right and his and leadership straight, is underrated right yeah, and like, his leadership the communication like he's an overall yeah. a really really good player and he's shown it that's why he's a champion um and straight sick has been just he they call him best shot for no he, he calls himself best shot for a reason man he has a Corey has a nasty shot he knows how to play the game uh he knows how to slay really well um and uh and then the addition of super cc he's the kind of a, the the wild card in my head and he's gonna have to be a difference maker for this team to crack into the top four um unlike west though i do believe when both teams are playing uh, when flyers is playing at their best and casey pioneers is playing at their best I I may be in the minority here based off his based off of like their track record so far, but I think I would give the edge to Flyers just because of 
Yeah, I mean, I, that's just, <laughs> I, I think in a best of five series, when when both these teams are playing at their best, I think Flyers can take it. Uh, they, I think they have the experience and they have, you know, they've been there and they've done that. And I know Casey Pioneers, I know they've been doing it more recently. And they're definitely, in terms of like amongst the pro circles, I'm sure they would pick. I, I think they would pick that roster as well. But I don't know. I just have a feeling about this Flyers roster with the addition of Trippy. I think he's going to be a bit, big difference maker. Um, and I, I, I think this Flyers ro uh, roster has a chance to break into the top four if they match up against Casey Pioneers. That's another powerhouse of a, of a slayer to add to a team, having Trippy uh, come in. Yeah, he just won this EC yeah. Sports tournament as well, right? So, you I mean, know, he's yeah. good. No, yeah, uh, yeah. Trippy's. This is no shot to Trippy. We know Trippy's subbing into this team. He's just playing in it to to have an opportunity to play in the tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, the Trippy is is not. You don't think they could? You don't think they team. could beat Casey Pioneers in a, in a uh, best of five? I haven't seen anything close to to anything that I want to see out of straight sick or commonly in a very long time. Um, mm -hmm. And and because of that, there's no way I'm going to predict them. I think that like at, at their peaks, they were really good halo players straight sick I, at one point straight sick looked like he was going to be one of the next big things right um and he's had a long jet like he's had a very long career of like consistency but that consistency has never been in the top four um that consistency has always been top six top eight looking in um he may have been on like a top four seated team at one point in time but not, like not throughout his career um i think that like these guys are are definitely solid. There's no shot to them. But like commonly as a player, he's too inconsistent himself. Like when he's really when he's playing really really well, he's a game changer. Like you said, but it's not often I get to see that version of commonly, and that's very unfortunate. Um, because it, he plays like he, on, he plays on such a fast sense, and he does some like really unorthodox things to where it's like I can tell you basically when I'm watching commonly screen, even though it like you don't even have to have a webcam or, or show me that it's like, and tell me that it's common. I can be like, you know, that looks like Commonly's point of view. It's like super hectic, but when he's on and he's hitting his shots, it's like, like things are happening and he's making plays. But like I said, it's, I just don't, ex I can't predict that consistency because it, it hasn't been there in the past. And, and I've been waiting for it for what feels like about five, six years at this point. Um, so I think these guys are good. If they're all on fire, yeah, they can be a KCP. But, I mean, I'm not going to predict somebody to be all on fire, right? I'm not going to predict them yeah. to be playing at yeah. their ceiling. I'm going to be. I'm I guess my pushback to, to that would be my my pushback to that point would be. You're saying that you haven't seen this stuff out of Flyers when I when I would argue we've seen it out of Commonly in this game. We've seen it out of Trippy in this game. Uh, straight sick. I agree with your point there. I think he's kind of been in that middle to lower end of the top, like the top teams throughout Halo for a, quite a while. But that's not to take away from. I feel like as competitors and as 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 someone who's played against straight sick and obviously all of y'all has all of you guys have as well he's always been like a very solid and a very good player like throughout his his whole career i wouldn't have been surprised if you told me that one of the better teams were to give him a shot but i think you have to factor in like clicks and all this stuff and his friend groups and he just never really branched out into joining some of those other rosters right so um and then my and again my pushback to your to your point Wes is that Casey Pioneers only really have put themselves in this position because they played the game forever when no one else played and they had such a huge advantage when everyone started coming back to Halo 5 um and and before everyone came back they were winning everything with renegade on their team and then all the good players start coming back and they can't even sniff like a championship at this point so i think they're if anything they're falling backwards as halo 5 is progressing and some of these players that have done it at the top are slowly moving forward so not to say that flyers is is in the same category as like cloud nine and sentinels where they, or you know where they can regain their footing and just start winning everything but i do think they have the pieces to to at least have a case to, to beat this team, this KC Pioneers team, and make it into the top four. Well, KCP got third yesterday um, in the esports arena tournaments, and there's a lot of good teams third, playing. Third, in that. fourth, um, right? It's or or actually third. They got third. Oh, uh, okay. You don't I forget. Oh, it's double fourth, M. It's third. double M in that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um. So this is kind of like you're you're right about KCP winning the esports arena tournaments and then the big dogs coming back and them kind of fizzling out and trying to figure out where they actually stand amongst the top teams i think they stand fourth i think that they are correctly seated in their spot i do not think that they're better than inconceivable cloud nine or sentinels i think that they are better than everyone below them though 
I think mm -hmm. that this is where this team wins. And losing Renegade is huge. Like, if they have Renegade, they probably can compete uh, a little bit closer with the likes of Sentinels, Cloud9, and Inconceivable. Um, but, I mean, you lose Renegade, a world-class player, and that's what's going to happen, right? Um, yeah. But the pickup in Manny has been solid. This team is still quick, and they're still playing some really good Halo 5. These guys understand the meta of Halo 5 better than they anyone below them. And that's what I give them the leg up on. Like, I yeah. think Flyers, as individual players, and, like, we're talking, like, individual shots and whatnot, I, I think Straight Sick is one of the best shots in, like, in probably the history of halo right but the meta um, you think but, as a team but they, they play they do yeah they play more they efficient. play yeah. better halo 5 than flyers yeah. does no, I think, and, yeah. and that's why i give them the leg up it's because they will be more efficient than flyers they will not have to out slay flyers in order to win games if the slays are close between those two teams the game score not in the slayers will not be close, I don't think. I think that yeah. KC Pioneers is very efficient when they play, I, and I enjoy, like, you can tell that they know how to play Halo 5 correctly by this point. I do want to jump in uh, and give my two cents. I really liked the, the back-and-forth discussion. Um, I think that we... Uh, uh, my opinion on the Slayers team is probably going to shock you guys on what, what they need. Um, you guys kind of... We kind of brush over Super CC, Um He's he came from a roster that kind of blew up towards the end of Halo Five. That actually consisted of it was like him, Talik, and Envor. Uh, some of those like kind of new names that we see in the top eight here. Talik obviously is on Pioneers. Envor is on that Falling Esports team, and he's a really solid player. He's been he's one of those players that's been playing Halo Five. So I'm not I'm not worried about him at all. Uh, we know what Trippy can do. For me, and I say this, you know, you know where my heart's at. I need Straight Six to be better. Period. Uh, I've known him since he was 12 years old. Uh, I was 14. Frosty yelled at him in the land, told him he needed to get a calling book. Um, and I've watched, I've watched them lose some, like one of the close series they lost in the last tournament I watched, uh, straight stick was bottom fragging. And it's just not gonna, it's not gonna cut it for if you're trying to beat a team like pioneers. And, uh, we know what he's capable of. So I'm, I have to call him out and say, Hey Corey, like just, if you're playing your best, like this Flyers team, I think this Flyers team lands on him. Cause I think commonly, uh, whether or not he's on shot wise and some of the frantic plays that you're talking about, Wes, I agree. I think whether or not he's on in those things, he will be on in like his leaderships and his play calls. So like the chaos that we see, I still think commonly has a good understanding of this game, regardless of what people think he's, he's actually been playing Halo five longer than most people think when we all were grinding Halo three this year, specifically 2020, uh, I noticed him go back and start playing and streaming Halo five early on. He didn't really participate in 2020 Halo three at all. Um, so he, he still understands what needs to get done. Um, and I think flyers for me on this whole list of teams is probably one of the, the more X factor teams out there in the sense that like when those dudes are on fire, like there's no lacking of the individual talent. It's just what, which version of them are we going to get? Which version of straight stick am I going to get on Saturday? You know, like, are they going to be the team that's fired up clicking and on the same page or are they going to be kind of a mess? You know, so I don't know what we're going to see. It's kind of hard to predict them. Before we move on, I will say, uh, to Faisal's point, um, I think if you can have any fourth right now, I think like somehow managing to get Trippy on this team. That is could huge. be a difference maker. I'm Trippy, telling you. Trippy has been playing. Will be. Will be. Because now their roster went from being like commonly straight sick and two kind of up and coming players to like commonly straight sick Trippy. And then you add Super CC, who's kind of in that same, who's coming up in that same mix as Tall Lake and, and Envor and some of these guys. So I agree with the track record. It's hard not to vote Casey Pioneers. And I completely understand why someone would pick them over Flyers. I'm just in this, uh, I, I would put myself more in that Hunter JJX's boat of saying these guys can turn it you know they could have a good day and just be playing really well and and we know what they all what all those players represent uh minus super cc is kind of newer so for that reason i think they are a wild card and they could be on fire and definitely in my opinion they could knock out a team like casey pioneers yeah i i think i think with with the addition of trippy it it gives your team an entirely new ceiling um if you're flyers the biggest thing about Trippy for me, though, is that I think with the better teammates Trippy has, Trippy plays better. That's um, true, so too. If you give him... If, if Trippy has these dominant players on his team, he has shown that he can play at that dominant level alongside them. I'm worried about the opportunity that Trippy's going to have with his play style um, if, if the other three aren't necessarily doing things that he's kind of used to having done now that he's kind of found himself playing with such elite players like... When he goes I on have Halo some 3, he's playing have with some, the best yeah. in the world. 
I do have some pushback on that, Wes. Like a, a, a different side of that same coin, though. Like we've seen, like if you add someone like Trippy to to a lower, like I guess you could say a lower tier team in the past, we've seen what adding a player who has been there, done that in terms of beating these top four teams can do to a roster and do to it's, like it, elevating everyone like else adding, around him. You know, it's it's not like adding a renegade. Uh, I think renegade like opens up so much for a team. I don't know if Trippy creates those same openings as much as like assist the players that are creating those openings. So like Trippy makes APG like the plays that a player like APG will make. Uh an example, um Trippy will like follow APG up and make the right play and because of it like there's just a lot of efficient halo going on like those two work so well together. But when he doesn't have that APG, I worry about like what that's going to look like is he's because he's going to find himself like having to do probably a lot more than he's used to. I'm not saying he's not capable of it, but what I'm saying is he's probably used to it. So his play style needs to like almost change in order for this team to like have more success. But an, an, an underrated it, aspect of Trippy's game though is his communication and how well he, how clear he communicates and, and can organize things around him. Whereas like, like you said, you add a renegade to a team, he's going to make him better. We saw with Casey pioneers, but uh, I don't see renegade so much being involved with the other three players on his team as much as being just a crazy talent that's able to elevate a team based on his skill alone. Does that make sense? But it, I feel, it, no, it but I feel like for KT Pioneer so specifically, that wasn't the case just because how much like doubles and money twos and these these guys always have that relationship outside of just the in-game, you know, playing as a team. I think they would also play in like money twos. So Renegade specifically in that example, Hunter, I think he did fit in with that roster exactly how he needed, how, how they needed him to. Whereas to Wes's point, I think Trippy, I could see him not kind of filling in that role the same way Renegade renegade did with that old casey pioneers roster I Trippy's think like a team-based player right like yeah absolutely. he's a, he's a very individual he skill player but at all times he's got his like his teammates in mind he's like how can i help whoever's a lot like when i spawn when trippy spawns he like is so aware of the comms that are going on he's like i need to help bradley i need to help tj or like when they're playing halo 3 like that's what's going through his mind renegade is not does not care about his teammates at all he's more of like where is a snipe like see bone get bone dominate when i have the bone right like he's like a dog almost um it's like but uh, it's like a different style in, in these two players and i think that like having a renegade renegade will be good on any team yeah, um i yeah. think trippy needs like a specific team in order to like play at his best level I think mm -hmm. when you have good communicators we'll like see. commonly and straight, like that, I think Trippy fits in pretty well. But we, we, yeah. we will and have to I wait would, and see. I would tend yeah. to give Trippy the benefit of the doubt and say Agreed. I think he can step into that role and kind of help a team that's not as good become better. Uh, if anything, I think he he I would give him the benefit of the doubt in that scenario. Maybe not to the extent of dropping Renegade onto a roster like KCP. Um, I think dropping Trippy onto this Flyers roster doesn't have the same like it doesn't magnify their team as much but i would give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he can be a difference maker um when he's added to this roster but i would like to let's move on to yeah, the top yeah. four teams now because we have about 20 minutes before we have to end this end the episode i would say uh so we can just kind of try to go through these top four teams on her yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, we've talked a lot about Casey Pioneers, but I do want to show them love. Uh, yeah, Druk, we already, we already Manny, talked yeah, but Druk, Manny, Soul Slam, Talik, um, these guys, we were all worried when they lost Renegade that maybe they could com completely fall out with some of the better players coming up, and they they have they have fallen out of that top two, but they've stayed pretty solidly in the top four. They did have a week where they lost yeah. no ice. Um, but going into this, I know these guys are super passionate. I know they just recently signed to this KC Pioneers org, uh, so they got a lot of good things going for them, and I'm, I'm really happy to see their hard work pay off. Um, so my question would just be to Wes, like, does this team have the potential to break into the top two? With the single elimination bracket, you know, it's either you're going to be top four or in a championship. Could these guys land themselves in a championship? Yeah, I, I absolutely think they can. Uh, I think they have to be playing very, very well to do it. And it's going to be an upset when they beat one of the teams to get there. But um, they're the team that I think is capable of breaking into this top two, top three um, seeded teams. And, and I think that... Um, on a consistent basis, they play at, at they play good Halo Five, and if no matter what the shots are doing, or no matter like the individual plays that are being made, those are kind of irrelevant. It's like at the end of the day, they understand Halo Five at a very high level, and I think that gives them like an opportunity in every series. 
What about you, Faisal? Do you agree with that? Do you think this team has a chance of winning or getting in the finals? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I do not think this team will get into the top two. I think they're barely holding on to that four spot. Again, this is this is this is how I feel about the roster. Just because I and, and it's gonna have to. Maybe my I think my opinion would change with time, but due to the fact that KC Pioneers found all of their success once Halo Five was no longer the main game to compete in, so they got to get such a big kind of leg up on the competition. I can't put them in that top tier just yet because there's so much more for them to prove. And not I don't want to sound like a hater. Um if anything, I've I've always been kind of that underdog up and coming player, so I can relate to this KC Pioneers team. Um, kind of reminds me of like my Warriors teams back in, back in the days when we kind of just figured things out and figured out the meta and tried really making our own niche. Um, but until you know, when you look at teams like Sentinels, Cloud Nine, Inconceivable, you I'm just gonna pick random names and uh, random players across the teams. You got Saiyan, Boo Boo Doo Boo on one team. You got Eco, Renegade Stellar on one team. You got Neptune, Roll Two, Snake on one team. I don't think KC Pioneers has what it takes when it, when all the chips are on the table and this is a, a tournament that I think all those top teams are going to be playing with the mindset of representing my org and like, hey, I'm trying to win this thing. Like, we can show you guys what we're really about. Um, and it's for a, a bigger price pool of $10,000. I don't think they're going to be any of those top three teams. Uh, my prediction is also, I don't... Okay, here's how I look at it. There's literally, like, you remember in uh, Avengers Endgame where, you know, Tony Stark was like, is this the one like there's like a million different possibilities and there's only the one way that it could work out. There's only, in my opinion, out of all the possibilities in this, there is only one way that Casey pioneers, uh, gets in, finds themselves on finals. And that's not to say they're not great. I love these dudes. They're awesome. I love everything they stand for and how much they've improved. The one way they make it into a finals is that they play, if they play inconceivable, they're not winning. If they play Sentinels, they're not winning. If they play cloud nine playing decent, they're not winning. But if they play cloud nine coming out, extra weird like cloud nine has a few weeks ago cloud nine since i feel like has stepped it up a lot but if they somehow run into that weird funky cloud nine that's like way off that's the only shot i think pioneers has in making themselves in the finals but like i said cloud nine has kind of turned their game around a little bit so i don't i don't see that happening it's like i said it's that million and one chance if i look at the teams above them how they're going to get up to that finals but um it wouldn't shock me if they did find a way in there um because of the work they've put in so uh up next we've got sentinels uh, do i even need to say who the roster is i mean i will anyways it's weird that, this is weird that they're they're number three on this list it's just it's uh, weird to see snake bite royal two neptune front eight are we just slandering Neptune? I mean, they won with them before, so... <laughs> no, I'm saying the only update to reading the teams, yeah. the, the players on the team... Oh, okay, 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 okay. I thought you were throwing shade at Neptune. Neptune. <laughs> yeah, Neptune, Royalty, no, Neptune, Frosty, Neptune. Uh, and Snake Bite. Uh, Faisal, like you said, it's weird that they're kind of in that third spot. Can you, you know, let us know what's been going on with this team and how they've landed here? Yeah, like, so, and we kind of touched on it before we started the the re the broadcast or the recording for this for this week's episode. But it's strange, like we we're seeing, and I know, like like Clutch said, they are playing with Neptune on their roster. So Sentinels' official roster is Snakebite, Roll Two, Frosty, and Lethal. But as you all know, Lethal is not is has choosing not to uh, compete in Halo 5 and he is playing in Halo you know Halo 3 tournaments so Sentinels now has Neptune obviously um, but it's strange that in the past like few tournaments we see Sentinels in the grand finals and then losing getting second or you know maybe getting top four in some of these HCS tournaments um, and because we're used to seeing Sentinels get you know face adversity and then always seem to overcome it and, and that's what has made them kind of that his like historically amazing halo team and again it's you have to take it with a grain of salt because lethal's not on their roster but it, it is strange seeing them kind of get to where they need to be like consistently but then at the same time consistently lose right when they're at that final point you know that that final hurdle per se so um as far as where i think sentinel is going to land in this tournament i definitely think they they 100 have an opportunity to win this tournament if they are playing uh like we know sentinels to play um and as far as if i would consider them favorites i even though they are we're looking at their you know their their track records throughout hcs has a pinned tweet on their twitter the inconceivable roster is nine and was oh that was for the last tournament actually but yeah, either yeah. way 
uh, this Sentinels roster, I think they, in my head, they would be a favorite just because of, um, you know, the players on the team, Snake by Real 2 and Frosty, add, you know, adding Neptune. I would call them my favorites to win the whole thing. I think, you know, snake bite in particular is going to rally the troops and be that dad bite that we've known him to be in the past and kind of make sure everyone has their heads heads on straight and really kind of brings home another win for the sentinels organization i think since sentinels has um you know they've they've been on board with sentinels they have they've obviously had a lot of success early on excuse me but lately they've kind of been falling out of their dominant you know what we know them to be so i think snake bite's really going to step up and help this team you know secure a spot in the finals and ultimately win the tournament and uh you know we'll we'll see what they could do i think when you say the word championship i think something in their head is going to click and they're going to go to that next place that we always yeah. kind of see like now that it's a halo 5 championship instead of like pro series this or you know cup this open cup whatever um it was weird like because i like sentinels went from winning um i believe it was the first pro qualifier they won it like pretty dominantly and, and they, they won kinda, the second one too no uh the second one no because that's what led to this i believe or has there been three have there been two or three of those since maybe it was the second one they won too as well yeah um but then after that it was like a really weird like almost felt overnight like slide like they didn't win esports arena that they lost to that um that that falling team with uh with boo 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 that one week mm -hmm. in the esports arena and then they kind of slipped down um wes can you give me a vibe check on what's going on in the sentinels roster how, yeah, how give us what a you vibe expect check. yeah what's going on man what's going on you got the um, inside scoop <laughs> yeah personally it's like what my personal opinion of what's going on is I'll, I'll say that for the second piece but uh sentinels is still confident i think that they think neptune's a really uh, a fantastic player i think they're all just still trying to get acclimated to halo 5 i know roll 2 can't stop complaining um <laughs> about having to play on cfps um and i think that that's really taken a toll on him because uh, he's a player that really does require on high precision accuracy uh that's like what his gameplay is right um so when he's not able to shoot a lot of what he probably does in game is not nearly as effective as he typically normally is um so i'm looking at roll two to really have a, a strong tournament and if he's able to i think sentinels does have a chance to win they're confident um i mean with frosty back i think that that's given this team a lot of new life um and i, th I think that they do want to get back to that like final boss form where it's like they're the greatest thing and they have no chance of losing any tournament. I don't think they're going to be able to do that without lethal though. Mm, um, and I, I was agree. talking to Roll Two last night, and I was saying like he was like, like obviously Neptune's a great player, like a world class player, incredible individual, probably one of the strong. He he's arguably like playing the strongest on the team right now, but. I think Lethal just brings so many intangibles to a team, uh, in my opinion, that Neptune doesn't really have just yet in his career. He's still so young. Mm -hmm. um, but Lethal's like a veteran. Lethal's going to make the right play just about every time. You don't have to worry about Lethal's, what Lethal's doing. Lethal's not going to die carelessly. Um, he's going to hit his shots. Like He might not make the same like aggro plays as Neptune makes at times that, that are like, super flashy. Yeah, but mm -hmm. that consistency and that decision making and that being on the same page really is an important quality to have. Um, I, they're confident, is what I'll say. And I kind of brought hesitancy to roll two last night. I go, I go, you guys, <laughs> I go, you guys kind of need TJ. And he's like, he's, and he disagreed. He was like, it would take TJ too long, anyways, to get back into the groove of Halo Five, which I agree. Um, by this point, there's no point in TJ playing Halo Five because it would take him too long to get acclimated to sixty oh, FPS. Yeah. Totally. and everything that like that that ship has sailed um but like in my opinion i don't expect the sentinels seem to have the same similar success that they're used to having they're definitely the favorites that go into this tournament i would still say to y'all's point um i would say if vegas were to put off odds and they were to give me a positive number to for sentinels to win the tournament i'd probably sell my car um because okay, that's we a haven't, little bit excessive come on sentinels, they haven't shown you they haven't shown you the dominance to be saying like the last couple weeks, hasn't yeah. had, sentinels hasn't here. been an underdog going into a tournament in their that's career fine, but you would not put you would not put your car <laughs> note on them winning this thing <laughs> absolutely i call i, I call <laughs> that right here. now i'd call royal two and say i need you on your a game i need you up like warming up before <laughs> this tournament started but. 
Um, but for them to be anything other than the favorite, like that's silly talk. Mm-hmm. I mean, we still have great teams in Cloud9 and Inconceivable that are just right there. I think there Inconceivable with them. has their number for whatever I reason. I think so too, yeah. man. I think they're not a lock anymore, which is weird. Like it's the first time I've felt in years, I think that Sentinels is not just a lock to win. Probably since that 2018 season with Splice, it's the first time I feel I felt like they've kind of. You know, and I don't think it's like anything like a diss against them. I think, you know, it, we are playing Halo 5 in 2020. They're obviously looking to the future. They don't have lethal. Like, I think not having lethal, like, m- makes them vulnerable. Like, it, it might be a tiny speck of vulnerability, but it's still vulnerable compared to what he brings to their team. He he shores up all the holes in their ship, in my opinion. You know, he's what keeps them uh, unbeatable. So, um, I, for the first time, I can honestly say, like, I probably wouldn't put my car note on them. <laughs> I mean, I probably would have in the past, but there's too uh, good of odds this if you're getting positive numbers on a team like Sentinels. And I'm yeah. not saying that I, I, I honestly probably am not going to predict them to win this tournament. But if you give me positive odds on them to win the tournament, then that's a different story, right? You got <laughs> it, it. It's a gambling thing you guys just wouldn't understand, right? When you get good odds on an opportunity that even though you may not think it's going to happen, you kind of have to take it. Um, yeah. That being no. said, <laughs> yeah. You we, go, now I was just gonna say, I, just to be clear, they are my favorites, as I stated earlier. Um, whoa, 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 save that for later. I, we I, gotta I, give the predictions. Save that for later. We got, we, we haven't gotten to predictions yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but as far as far as the roster, though, um, they they have they are the roster to beat, right? You have Frosty, uh, Royal Two, Snakebite, and then the addition of of a great up and coming player like Neptune. They've shown success even with this roster, even though they were kind of fighting from behind against some of these other players. Um, in terms, and I say that in terms of like coming back to Halo Five and having to readjust, and you have someone like Royal Two, like Wes was saying, so predicated his play style, so predicated on him hitting his shots and 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 him not being able to do that with the consistency he's used to, you know, playing on PC and unlimited frames as compared to going back to 60 frames and and trying to readjust, even though he was a juggernaut in Halo 5, just like the rest of his teammates when the game was at its peak. I think, again, I have to take that into consideration like that. What it takes to come back to the game when everyone is already playing it and trying to find your footing as being that dominant team again. So, um, yeah, you know, well, this team has what it takes to win. And uh, I, I think they, they, in my opinion, they will win this thing, but we'll, we'll get into that later, uh, hopefully well, pretty soon let's, here. Maybe let's just jump into it. I mean, uh, you know, we'll talk about Cloud9 and Conceivable in, in there, but Faisal, like, who, like, give me one, two, three, four for your top four on this tournament, the way with how you're looking at it right now. I am going to go with my, okay, let's just get into it, right? The top four yeah, predictions. Let's just do it. Let's just do we're going to do a round table here, talk about what teams we're going to get top four. But really quickly, I want to give, you know, breakdown. So Cloud9, you got Eco, Penguin, Renegade, Stellar, and Inconceivable. You got Bound, Boobadoo, with Falcated, Saiyan. Um, those are the other two of those dominant rosters that we kept kind of alluding to throughout this show. Um, so my top four predictions for uh, this championship Halo 5 tournament is going to be Sentinels, I think will be first. I'm going to go with Inconceivable getting second place. Um, Cloud9 will be my third place pick. And fourth, I'm going to give it to KC Pioneers. Uh, and I know that's strange for me to say after all the all the you know the, the, the stock I was putting into Flyers earlier. Um, but again, to reiterate what I was saying, because it may have been confusing, but I'm saying I think Flyers has what it takes to do it. So what that means is I think they're going to have to go out of their comfort and really play out of their ordinary to win, but I think they can do it. As far as who I think has a track record to do it and who has done it up until this point, you got to give it to Casey Pioneers. Um, But I guess to Wes's point, if you were to give me odds and give me some crazy odds on Flyers, I may take it. But if it was just even odds, uh, I mean, Casey Pioneers has done it more often than, than Flyers so far. So they would be my fourth place team. So that'll be my top four and we'll see how it pans out. I I am excited to see some of these matches coming up and some of the, we're going to get to see top level Halo five and a little bit of a different scenario than we've seen in the, in the past, right? Some of these teams aren't necessarily the official roster is going moving forward and it is a little bit of that you know they're playing with house money kind of feel to it a little bit uh it's when it comes to teams like sentinels and even inconceivable right because that's not their that's not saying's official roster 
And uh, so there is a little bit of that. And maybe yeah. Cloud9 has a chip on their shoulder because they're like, hey, this is our this is our official team, man, going into Infinite too. Like, we got to win this thing if we're trying to be a top dog in Infinite. So maybe Cloud9 has, has a chip on their shoulder and they come and take this thing. Uh, and I definitely think that they have what it takes too. I've always been a big, uh, you know, advocate and fan of this Cloud9 roster uh, ever since their splice days. Now, we've talked about them losing Shotzi and adding Penguin and what that does for their team. And obviously, Shotzi being a... a difference maker and one of those transcendent players losing him is huge but i still think even with the addition not i say even with but i think penguin is an amazing addition to this roster and you know throughout throughout their 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 team they have a bunch of skilled yeah. players but I'm, yeah you know that's going to be my top four um do you want me to go west or do you want to go on your top you four next? okay okay my top four is uh, a little different um than yours Faisal, as you'd imagine um my number one team my number one spot is going to inconceivable um and i'll tell you why i think when i look at cloud nine uh without shotzi you get worse when i look at sentinels without lethal you get worse uh when i look at pioneers without renegade you get worse um inconceivable with saying you get better i'm sorry we you know the the rest of the guys here we know who inconceivable sport is we obviously can't talk about it but for halo 5 and where they're at right now having saying is like a massive 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 upgrade in my opinion i've said it time and time again i think saying is a top three player in halo 5 right now i might even give him the edges maybe on his best day he's the best player in the game he's that good at halo 5 he's that much of a difference maker you guys all watch his stream he's absolutely disgusting we're gonna have to have him on the show um so my number one spot's gonna be inconceivable uh number two is gonna be sentinels uh, I think, uh, and, and you never know, like if they won, it wouldn't shock me, right? Uh, so inconceivable first, Sentinels second. My third is going to be Cloud9, and then my fourth is going to be Flyers. I'm going to put them in there. I'm going to say they come out there on fire. It's championship time, commonly goes into X Games mode and, uh, you know, lands them a spot in the top four. So X for me, mode. that's that's my uh, my top four. Wes, uh, why don't you go ahead, bro? Yeah, I'm... I'm going to teach you guys how to do a top four real quick. First off, too. Uh, you start with the fourth, and then you move up to, oh, to okay, build okay, uh, okay. anticipation. Uh, all right, right, all right, so all right. At, at fourth, we have Kansas City Pioneers. I think that these guys might be able to create an upset to get into the top two uh, or top three, but they're not going to create multiple upsets. I don't think. I don't think they're capable of that. I think they can win any series. I don't think they will win every series. Um, so we're going to leave them at fourth. You better, hope they get about them. you better hope they get top four. You've been talking a lot of talk. You better hope they even get top four. And when they do, better hope I they look make like I do every time. <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about. So, uh, the top three is pretty much a coin toss. We've been over this. Like these three teams, it's dependent on who's making plays, who actually is playing well on this day. Uh, at that the best team may the best team win because all three of these teams are very capable of beating each other in any specific order in any mm -hmm. series. Uh, if Saiyan's on fire, let it be. If Frosty's on fire, let it be. If Renegade's on fire, then like let it happen, right? But what do I think is going to happen? I think Inconceivable is actually going to get third. Um, I Ooh. think that I see to your point. Saiyan online probably the most dominant force in Halo Five right now. Um, I don't. No, if I see the consistency out of this team as a whole, I think that they have the potential to get upset. I think it's going to be a close series for top two, whoever they play against. I see them getting edged out. I think Sentinels, that leaves Sentinels and Cloud9 in the finals. I think it's going to be a great finals um, if this is going to be the series. I think I'm going to give the edge to Cloud9. Everything Ooh. I've seen out of the guys on Cloud9 um, as of recently has been fantastic. Stellar has been playing very, very well recently. Eco has been playing extremely good. Yesterday, Eco made so many plays that I was just shocked at. That really changed the outcome of a lot of the games and, and really pushed his team over the edge in order to beat the Sentinels team yesterday. So um, he's been there. He's done that. He doesn't have the exact same team. He had actually had Saiyan on his team as well. So um, he's not going to have that, but he is going to have uh, his buddy Stellar back. And I think that everybody on this Cloud9 team is really like, is extremely good. They have more of a purpose to win this because they are their full team. Exactly. So, so they're going to be able to like, they're going to want to win it for that case. Cause if you get, if you have your full team and you're playing against a bunch of like teams with a pickup teams with a four, like a random fourth and whatnot, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. 
we need to beat these guys. Like it's if one we of lose lose scenarios, it's like yeah. obviously it's not a lose lose, but in the grand scheme of things, but it's like if we win, we won against we're teams supposed that to win. Asterix, roster, yeah. Asterix, and if we lose, yeah. then it's like oh, you lost to teams that you don't even have your full roster. You know, they didn't yeah, have but roster. and it, it's not that serious. Yeah, because yeah, 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 all totally. these fours are like world class mm-hmm. players, like Saiyan sure. and when Saiyan and Neptune are the two fourths that aren't supposed to be on the team, it's like <laughs> that's not really like that fair, right? Like, like yeah, these are no, these you're are right, you're right, you're right. But that being said. Um, ev- like I, I just want to like, I can't exaggerate it enough. Everything I've seen out of this Cloud Nine team is what I have wanted to see out of this Cloud Nine team for Halo Five. Um, and and since they've come back, they've really evolved to the players that we know them to be in this game. Yeah. I think that they're playing at such World a high champs. level that they're going to be able to win. They've been they've been on. Um, I I actually have stood a bit corrected on how fast they've bounced back. I was not expecting that for Cloud Nine, so they are playing well. I love the fact that all three of our predictions are so freaking different, though. Like it's going to be cool to see who gets it. You know who gets Definitely. part of it. Maybe none of us no, will be t- right. Who knows? So go ahead. Yeah, Pedro. we'll have Take to see. We'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see. You know how it pans out. I am very excited to you know to like we like we talked about see some of these top level you know Halo players and Halo teams duke it out and see who can take home uh, you know the the take home that first place prize and the bragging rights and the ten thousand dollar you know um, we'll have to I have to kind of take a look at do we know what the breakdown is of the prize pool like first through eighth it's probably gonna be first is five five k I think like I, they've done this ten k okay. breakdown well, well, the same way yeah, every time yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. get a, we'll get a chance to take a look at it, but um, but yeah, man, it's gonna be exciting to see these guys, and and again, we have the predictions. All three of our predictions were different, so we'll see who gets to have those bragging rights coming into the next episode. Uh, but for this week, guys, we're gonna I'm gonna close things out here. Um, we're gonna go go around the table really quick and give our social medias for the people. Um, again, everyone, thank you so much for sticking around this long. If you have stuck around, we're about 55 minutes in. We have to p- upload this video in like 10 <laughs> minutes. So we're going to be quick about this. So, uh, guys, for, for me, this is Goofy. You can find me on Twitter at GGoofy and streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Goofy. Uh, Wes, Captain Clutch, go ahead, man. Uh, it's Wes Price with two E's on Instagram. It's uh, Wes underscore Clutch on Twitter. The, the Instagram, the uh, Instagram every time, right? And then Twitch. Yeah, hey, in the- go, I don't even post on Instagram, <laughs> but I, I did have some nice dog park stories <laughs> this past weekend. Nice. I to the dog park, and she had a blast. So you're missing out on quality content, is all I'm saying. He's also Twitch in the clutch, so don't don't miss out on those streams either. I'm obviously Hunter underscore JJX on Twitter and Twitch streaming Halo and everything else every day. I'm checking out Road Company this week, so that'll be fun. Uh, also, be sure to tune into the broadcast on Saturday. These two right here are going to be crushing it and bringing you guys that Halo action. And I want to see you guys in the chat. We're going to be hanging. It's going to be a good time. So for episode number 13, that's it for me, Faisal. Let's get out of here. Yeah, everyone have a great one. Thank you so much. If you stuck around this long, we'll see you guys for episode number 14. Have a great night. Peace. Peace.